Welcome to Fucked Up Fables. If destroying your childhood is something you enjoy, you've come to the right place. So we are keeping with the holiday festive theme. You know, a little elf. Yeah, I don't know what Vi's got going on over there. So uh, what's going on with these horns, Vi? Uh, so two weeks ago, we discussed yeah. the fantastic St. Nicholas and some of the wonderfully horrific stories associated with him. Um, but this week, we're going to talk about good old St. Nick's evil twin. Is he actually his twin? Like, yeah. I, I'm legitimately asking. No, he's not, oh. like, actually his twin. No. <laughs> he's just opposed to him. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of people refer to him as the shadow of St. Nicholas. Oh, okay. Um, so, for those who don't know, I'm referring to Krampus, whose name derives from the German word Krampen, which means claw. Claw. Yeah. So okay. Guys, I missed this last week. (laughs) It's really it's exceptionally funny because I just spent the last hour and forty minutes of my life watching the the 2015 Krampus film. It's an hour and forty minutes. I will never get back. Um, However. Yeah, however, um, it's funny that you would bring up the Toy Story thing because there's a lot of horrific toys in that movie. Um, we'll talk We'll talk about it a little bit later. Huh, I'm pretty sure that was a... I'm pretty sure I've heard people rave about the Krampus movie. I haven't heard anything about it. Like, I know that it exists, but I don't know if anyone I know... Has there, there, might, there might be more than one. This is like... Probably like a cult following. I was going to say, this is like a very cheesy... Uh, PG thirteen horror film. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty uh, bad. PG thirteen um, can be hard to do as a good horror film. They did drop their one f bomb. They got their one f bomb in. <laughs> Congrats good, to them. Good old Aunt Dorothy had to drop that f bomb. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, so uh, for this episode, we are going to head back to Eastern Europe which is kind of becoming a thing for me. I feel like like all of my episodes have been from Eastern Europe. You got Eastern Europe. I got mythology. Titania's got... Uh, France. I was going to say else. <laughs> I think I've got a couple from France. <laughs> Mine does actually tie into uh, Norse mythology a little bit here. Ooh. Um, yeah, so... Um, Krampus's original roots actually have little to nothing to do with Christmas and instead date back to like the pre-Germanic paganism um, across the German-speaking Alpines of Western Europe. So like Austria, Hungary, um, a few of the Slavic nations, and then obviously uh, Germany. Um, so before he was closely associated with St. Nick, he was believed to be the son of the Norse god of the underworld, Hell. Um, which goddess H E L? Yeah, I was. Well, <laughs> yes, I was going to say a lot of us are uh, are vaguely familiar with her now because of Marvel. Thanks, Marvel. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm she... familiar with her from the book series Everworld, which was a really cool book series. They're very very small. If you ever get a chance to read them, do it because it's about this group of kids that get transported to another world where every single god that anyone ever believed in actually exists. Oh, okay. uh, so you've got cool. the Norse, you've got the Celtic, you've got everything, and they run into Hela, and she's on the cover of one, and she's really cool with her, like, half-rotting face. <laughs> really cool. I should buy that series. I want to reread it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, but she also plays an important role in Thor Ragnarok. Um, oh, sister. Kate Blanchett. <laughs> yeah. Hella uh, is what I think they named her. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's what they called her. No, they still call her Hell. Did they? they? Oh, I thought. Okay. I thought I I thought they called her Hella too. Or Hella is what I thought. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I don't know. It, don't it's know. irrelevant because we're not here to talk about Marvel this time. <laughs> um. So he was thought to actually play an important role in pagan rituals. Uh, for the winter solstice where Krampus would pass through towns ringing bells in order to keep winter spirits at bay or disperse, like, winter ghosts. 
Ah, we're safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With Inky Doo Jingle Hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> So, um, Krampus actually became associated with Christmas specifically um, with the spread of Christianity as, like, a lot of the pagan beliefs sort of just morphed into uh, Christianity. Um, Much to the dismay of the Catholic Church, though, who attempted to ban Krampus in the 12th century because he too closely resembled the devil. (laughs) I mean, I've seen the pictures. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, it, and there is a uh, multiple attempts to ban Krampus, uh, but the first like noted attempt was in the 12th century by the Catholic Church. Uh, yeah. But there's also like an Austrian Christian Social Party that attempted to ban Krampus in the 1930s. So also you know failed it, horribly. What makes it really funny is that uh, fun fact for those who don't know about Puritan um, United States, they they had a ban on actual Christmas. Oh, because no fun. <laughs> yeah. So if it's fun, it, it's a sin. But yeah, no fun. A straight up ban on Christmas. So it's just funny that Krampus specifically was also banned in Christian <laughs> history. It's just kind of, that just kind of amused me. And I'm like, we've come full circle now. We have Christmas actually, because there are, there are some uh, festivals for Krampus now in the U.S., which is a very, very new trend i'm going to talk about that a little bit too i didn't know in the u.s that's Mm -hmm. that's interesting did it start with the movie because i'm telling you i remember people talking about it did actually (laughs) (laughs) um all right before we get there um so krampus descriptions of krampus do actually closely resemble the devil so from that standpoint i do understand why the catholic church was like no guys this is bad (laughs) <laughs> um, he is described as being half demon, half goat lineage, um, though he is strangely humanoid for such lineage. I will point that out. Um, he's often described as having a mangled, deranged face with horrible goat-like bloodshot eyes. Um, he has large fangs and an exceptionally long pointy tongue, which is frequently depicted hanging out of his mouth. I'm sorry, when um, you put things in with a goat face, all I can think is the chupacabra. So <laughs> <laughs> not, it, not it is not goat. I was gonna say it is not terribly <laughs> unlike that because he also has a large furry black body with giant goat horns that curl up from his head. Um, and he is frequently depicted as having uh, one cloven foot and one humanoid clawed foot. Um, or seems like just, you'd be unbalanced. Yeah, I was gonna say, or just two cloven foots. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of art of him that depicts him with one humanoid foot and one cloven. Interesting. Yeah. Does he have like lifts in his shoe? To... <laughs> it's a quad foot. He doesn't. Yeah, shoes. he doesn't wear shoes. He needs little... one, right? One okay, leg got little claws on it. One thing just longer than the other to make up for the imbalance. That's all. Yeah, ah, that's probably that's even more awkward than I was imagining. <laughs> it's like it's like when you have one high heel on but only the exactly. one. Exactly. <laughs> you walk on his tippy toes, the other foot. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, he might he might because because cloven legs do like the weird like back yeah. joint thing. So and maybe, like maybe arch forward like satyrs and stuff are usually depicted when they walk. It's kind of like forward. Leaning. Yeah. Yeah. Um so despite his horrible uh associations with um uh, Saint Nicholas and the Catholic Church's attempts to wipe Krampus away, um he strangely to me remains a very beloved holiday figure um <laughs> in many Eastern European slash Germanic countries. Um and since his recent popularization by the media, starting um, with some films about him, the one that I watched was from 2015, um, there are more and more countries that are taking part in Krampus not I'm going to mispronounce it, Krampus knock f- festivals? It's Krampus the, the night of, yeah, it's German. It's the yeah, night it's of like Crystal Nacht, yeah, which yeah. is a Holocaust thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so they will have like whole festivals 
um, where it's called the Krampus Lauf, and they will have uh, young men dress up as Krampus and run through the streets of their town to scare children. And so they what make, I'm like, a big is stay away out from Germany during Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the U.S. actually has several um, Krampus Lauf, which translates to Krampus Run. Um, and there's one in Florida. Of course, there's one in Florida. Why Florida? <laughs> um, New there's York and about. Philadelphia are the three big ones. Philadelphia uh, makes Los, sense. I believe Los Angeles was also on the list of, of big ones in the U.S. I think Philadelphia, like Pennsylvania, has a large um, Pennsylvania Dutch grouping of people, which is kind of descendant from Germany. Yeah, isn't that like kind of Amish? I think, but yeah, the it makes sense that Pennsylvania makes sense is what I'm getting at. <laughs> German ties, right, right. Um, Thank so, you, Office, which I just finished. <laughs> Man, I need to rewatch The Office. I've not seen it. You have until the end of the month. I mean, to watch it on Netflix. Yeah, there, then you have there are other ways that. to watch The Office. <laughs> Like, buy it and other legal things? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Definitely yeah. That, that one. Yeah. Um, so, Krampus. <laughs> um, so, I uh, I talked about the Krampus love being where uh, men would dress up as Krampus and run through the s- streets scaring children. Well, the reason that children are scared of Krampus. They eat, he eats them, doesn't he? I mean cannibalism is a thing on this show <laughs> we've only gotten i think one or two episodes about cannibalism I, I don't know technically that krampus eating people is cannibalism though because he's have to even have goats which is not it's that gray area because he's like but he's considered a humanoid so it becomes yeah like are elves yeah. eating dwarves cannibalism yeah, They're respond not in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have this discussion. <laughs> the moral dis- debate of cannibalism. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, Krampus is sort of a, uh, a an evil twin to our jolly Saint Nicholas. Um, they are not actually related. He is often referred to as the shadow of Saint Nicholas, though. And every year on the 5th of December, which is uh, typically the night before St. Nicholas would arrive. Um, he usually comes on the 6th of December. Krampus has free reign of the earth. Um, and if you are not taken by Krampus, then you then you may yet live to see your delicious treats and uh, joys and goodies from St. Uh, Nick on the 6th. Um, so Krampus's job is to punish those who have, quote, been naughty that year. Um, but he takes it way further than just a lump of coal in your stocking or a birch twig in your shoe. So Krampus will take, like, you know, birch branches and beat children to death with them. <laughs> um, okay. He will, he will carry Little around... Strength. Yeah, he, he, uh, he will carry around, like, tied birch swatches and beat children with them. Um, and... He is typically depicted with some sort of chain or chain like thing um, that he will use to tie up children and then shove them into his satchel where he will carry them away to his lair to be tortured and eaten. <laughs> Question. Question. <laughs> what are his guidelines for what is considered naughty enough to be beaten to death or kidnapped and then? tortured and does he make a list of these children and does he check it twice or does he check it like six times because evil number um as far as like you know criteria goes i think it's mostly just arbitrary i think he just likes kidnapping children um there so there's not like folklorically speaking there's not an actual answer to that question that i could find yeah um, Parents sign their kids I, up for it, <laughs> but I like to believe that he takes whoever Saint Nicholas does not want to have to leave a, a birch twig for. So there's probably like a secret evil side to Saint Nick, where he's like, "Man, this kid was really like this kid was really shitty this year. I cannot give them candy. 
I'm gonna have to leave him a birch wig, and he's got like anxiety about that. So Krampus <laughs> is like, "Bro, I got you, I got Aww. you." And it's Krampus will just kids. show up, and you'll never see that kid again. It's all I the feel like Krampus like, wouldn't condone. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like subconscious though, like uh, you know, one of those things where you just kind of don't what? look at it. What if Krampus is a physical manifestation of Saint Nicholas's anxiety? <laughs> um. That would work, except for the fact that Krampus existed before St. Nicholas did. Just saying. (laughs) (laughs) Then what if St. Nicholas is a physical manifestation of Krampus's um, conscience? What's the word? So, funny story about that. Conscience, that's what I'm trying to say. (laughs) It relates to the wonderful Krampus movie. Um, So, there are not any, like, stories of Krampus specifically that I could find. I don't know why Krampus exists. I couldn't find any, like, this is a thing that happened on December 5th. Like, I couldn't find any of those. So I was like, well, shit, what am I going to talk about? And I was like, I guess I have to watch the Krampus movie. (laughs) So so I rented it on Amazon. It is an hour and 40 minutes of my life that I will never get back. However, it was a very interesting depiction of the folk tale so i was kind of like Graphic- that- hmm? i was gonna say graphic wise is it like b level is it c level or is it top notch <laughs> um probably somewhere between like hollywood and b like there's some parts where you're like but there's some parts <laughs> that are like i'm extremely uncomfortable because that does not look okay <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it's like so a TV like, show. Got it. <laughs> um, so there's like there's a part in the movie where um one of the guys gets bit by something under the snow, and like you don't see like you there's like a three second shot where you see blood, and that like that part was like really really cheesy, and like there's a lot of like uh like suspected violence that they don't actually show because it's rated PG thirteen. So like that part was like a little oh yeah okay you know like all you hear all you see is the car shaking and the girl screaming and you're like all right waiting for the blood splatter but then the blood splatter never happens and you're like well sh- fuck why am I watching this <laughs> is she dead or is she not right right <laughs> um but there was some parts so there's like um in in the movie Krampus utilizes um like Christmas things like toys and decorations and stuff but like he twists them to be very very dark and so some of the toys that he uh like manipulated were super fucking creepy like they have this uh like the christmas tree angel except it gets this like creepy ass smile and its mouth is all filled with fangs and it's like it's it was very uncomfortable do you watch doctor who <laughs> is it a weeping angel <laughs> Um, the I've Christmas not... episodes twist some traditional they're, they're Christmas not. trees. Yeah, they're Christmas special. Those snowmen, man. Woo! There's <laughs> freaky ass snowmen in the movie too. They also made me a little uncomfortable. I I feel like it might just be like maybe they were it, maybe it was like a British show movie or maybe they just went with that thing because like I love British TV, but. Their graphics are definitely not Hollywood, but they embrace that. Like they full force with their um questionable. Yeah, I think they... it depends on which channel of BBC it winds up being on. Because I feel like a lot of BBC One shows get the higher budget. So like Doctor Who, especially the last season, their graphics were really good. Doctor but then if it's a like BBC, BBC Doctor Four. Who has- West Which is like the lowest. So <laughs> Doctor Who has some questionable. That's why I'm like they no. embrace their cheesy, horrible <laughs> graphics. Yeah. yeah, but if you compare what they have, like if you compare Doctor Who to some of the BBC Four shows, like it's night and day. <laughs> but right, there's some like, really good graphics on on recent Doctor Who seasons. It's not as I was gonna bad. say, Doctor Who might be bad, but it is not Power Rangers bad. So at least there's that. Uh, I embrace Power Rangers. I'm okay. I'm okay. I don't ever forever remember the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie 
and that purple ooze that was like at the time peak cinematography. <laughs> and now you oh my it. gosh, it was the best. <laughs> And then you rewatch it like five years later. You're just like, have, what is this? Have you seen the live action Sailor Moon I series? Not, no. It is like watching Power Rangers. It was released in, I think, like 2005 ish. <laughs> and it's one season long. It is almost a carbon copy of Power Rangers. But that's like, it's very nostalgic, yeah. but very cheesy. <laughs> Isn't that that's the whole really point funny. of Power Rangers? Like, it's that style of, like, all of the Power Rangers are that. Even the new Power Rangers are <laughs> ridiculous. It's still pretty cheesy. bad. Yeah. <laughs> they just embrace it. You don't need much to impress kids. Come on now. Right. Be real. You don't need much to impress me. I mean, same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm easily amused. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, good. yeah. So, um, so the, the the idea behind the movie was that um, those that cease to understand the meaning of Christmas and or believe in the spirit of Christmas, because Christmas is about giving and it's about sacrifice. Okay. And so the, those who, who forget what that meaning is, um, Krampus will come for them. Adults? Uh, yeah, it, anybody. Supposed to be children, man. Yeah. So it, We're supposed it, to be is, safe. it is triggered by children. So like <laughs> so, so like your children can bring upon your doom? Is that what yes, I'm hearing? Yes, basically. You bring little shits and you get punished. I mean, okay. Right. So like in, in the movie, them. for example, right. this this kid was like, um it there was extraneating circumstances that triggered the outburst, but he was like I hate all of you. I just want Christmas to be what it used to be. Like, why are you guys like this? And then he storms off and he rips up his letter to Santa and he throws it out his window. And that's what triggers Krampus to being like, all right, this kid needs to be punished. But the best way to punish the child is to take everything else that he loves. I mean, that sounds like a real good starting point for some family counseling, not murder. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right um so it, the the story is is pretty interesting and they actually like so like the kid's grandma lived with them and she was german so she spoke german you know and she kept saying keep the fire hot because that would prevent krampus from getting in the house because he couldn't come fire the chimney. every time he comes down the chimney mm-hmm. <laughs> what if you don't have a chimney uh that i guess you're safe then or it's like know. the Santa Claus where it makes one. Yeah, so I was going to say, so he was like too big to fit down the chimney. So he would like explode out the wall near the chimney. <laughs> yeah. man style. Wow. You know, <laughs> not, not, that, not that bad, but he would like, you, you would see like the wall crack and then like bricks falling out of the wall as he like climbed down the chimney. Oh, I was going more with like, Santa Claus has a key to everyone's house, so that way if you don't have a chimney, that's how he gets inside. Because we didn't have a chimney in Florida. Chimneys don't exist down there. Yeah, I mean, so, that makes sense. You wouldn't need one. Yeah. We had a fake chimney, and my dad said he could figure out how to get down it. Yeah. And I, didn't know, <laughs> I was too young to know that it didn't have a yeah. shoot. My parents just told us that Santa Claus had a universal key that opened up everyone's door, so that's how he could get in when people didn't have a chimney. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable sense. with that. We have two very different reactions. To that. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that makes perfect sense," and you were like, "No, no, I don't like that." <laughs> I don't like there being a key lying around in the world that anyone can get a hold of. Like that it's sounds like anyone. the plot it's to some sort of bad movie. The key gets stolen, and then they go around murdering people or something. I don't know. Incredible. I mean, that's basically what this it. movie was. <laughs> So the the best part of the movie, I, and I will actually say this, that I actually really, really liked the ending of the movie. <laughs> so, uh, you know, at the very end of the movie, the kid is like, no, I'm going to face Krampus and I'm going to get my family back. You know, so he goes up to Krampus and he's like, oi, stop being a dick and give me my family back. Except he doesn't say those exact words. And that's the meaning of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and then and then Krampus is all like, yeah, I'm still going to sacrifice your cousin to hell. Like, you know, it's cool, bro. 
And so the kid, the kid goes up to him and is like, you know, no. And then he's like, please, you know, don't, I just want my family back. I just want Christmas to be the way that it was before, you know? And like Krampus wipes away the kid's tear. And for a second, I was like, man, them. right. I was like, Krampus is going to give this fucking kid his family back. What a piece of shit. And then Krampus grabs the, spoilers. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> There's no spoilers. It's over five years old. It's yeah, I was going to say, it has been five years. I've never years. seen it. <laughs> you have five years. grabs the kid by the head and drops him in the hell portal, too. Yes! yes. Say, and then it gets better. It gets better. So then the kid, like, wakes up the next day. And I was like, motherfucker. Like, he... he it was like, all a dream. Right. It was all a dream. Really? How yes. that better? So, it, trust me, it, it's better. Okay. So it was all a dream. The kid wakes up and then they're opening their Christmas presents and everything is all good and the kid's like smiling and he's like, I love you mom and I love you dad and you know, even my shitty cousins I love you too. And then the kid opens his present and it's one of Krampus's bells. And it says Krampus on it. Um, and, his, and his grandmother had a bell because she too experienced Krampus like killing her family and whatnot. Um, so so she gets a bell every year? Uh, no, so the grandmother like had the bell throughout the story because uh. she Krampus left her the bell. Um, so the kid, you know, opens the box and it's this Krampus bell in it, and then the camera zooms out, and then you realize that they are all stuck in a snow globe in Krampus's lair. And then as the camera like zooms out further, there are thousands of snow globes. And I was like, oh, that's that's actually pretty good. That's, that's kind of cool because they're cool. stuck yeah. in their own little hell. Yeah, so he like murders them all and then you know and i thought krampus was gonna end up be like the good guy in the end but no he was a straight dickhole he stuck them bitches in a snow globe and then put them in his lair forever i wonder if they relive that day over and over and over again i would assume that would be horrible i believe there's a sequel is there i think so you're like well now i have to go watch it (laughs) yeah i know now i'm like the shitty movie that wasted an hour and a half of my life like, now I gotta go watch the sequel. Krampus. There's a 2016 film. Ah, beautiful. Kramp- oh, there's more. There's Krampus, The Devil Returns. There's Krampus Origin. I think that's one. I'm just looking at the search results. And there's Krampus Unleashed. They came out two Krampus movies in the same year, 2016. Excellent. Krampus movies. I'm gonna. I will say Holy that the 2015. 2015- the 2015 film sparked a huge like cult following mm-hmm. and and that is why we have a Krampus loft in the US now is because nice. of that film. Well there's Krampus. There's a Christmas horror story which looks like it involves Krampus. There's Krampus the Devil Returns. There's Krampus Unleashed. There's Krampus the Reckoning. Sorry. Krampus the Christmas Devil. Rare Exports a Christmas Tale popped up. I don't Cramp Mother Krampus. Oh boy. And Krampus, Krampus gonna, Origins. Krampus gonna get his juju on. I think your Mother week Krampus. is still. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does sound like my week is still. <laughs> and if they're all the same, most of them are the same logo, like same font. So I'm betting they're all. Oh god, that's terrible. By the, <laughs> by the same production company. That is like horrific. That is a saga. At that point, someone ranked them in it January. Is. I'm. I'm going to have to to do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go upstairs to Adam and be like, Adam, I'm spending thirty dollars renting shitty Krampus movies, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> this one has a list of ten Krampus movies ranked from worst to best. That's fantastic. I love it. And the best one is Rare Exports. It got a six point seven out of ten. So then, when you finish those Krampus movies, it's not Krampus, but I think it'll mesh with it. I will have to let you borrow Santa Claus vs. the Devil. <laughs> that sounds like something straight out of Family Guy. <laughs> Which is this movie from like the 1960s. And I'm going to need both of you like right now to Google just Santa Claus vs. the Devil and look at images and just look at the picture of this devil because what is it? Santa Claus versus 1959. 
Santa Claus versus the devil. Look at pictures of that devil and it, it's uh <laughs> He's wearing pantaloons. <laughs> stuck in a weird anime like cringe his face is always just like so uh, the cover uh, has him looking like his ear is horrible there's like a part where he goes invisible and it's um quite guys I'm gonna cosplay this um, so... I'm gonna cosplay the devil from the 1959 film <laughs> Santa Claus versus the devil so in Which one family, of you bitches is being Santa? <laughs> so, in our family... Our I'll be reindeer. Our the reindeer is fantastic, too. We have the tradition of um, watching... There's two really bad Christmas... Three. We watch three really bad ones. And they're Rift Tracks slash MST3K. I don't know which one specifically does them. But it's Santa Claus versus the Devil. Santa Claus and the Martians. In which Santa Claus gets kidnapped by Martians. I'm not even joking. Um, it's awesome. Then, then the Martians would have his universal key, and everything would be fucked. It's, uh, There's some sort of princess-looking girl in this movie. I want her outfit. And then we watched it's the really Star cute Wars, the Star Wars Christmas special because they did. Oh God! Of that. Oh no! It's so beautiful with the rift tracks, and oh, uh, it's bad. And then for New Year's, we watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's what we do for the New Year. That seems I usually better. watch. The entire Harry Potter collection. Because they're Christmas movies, apparently, according to Fox Family. And I haven't been able to do it yet. I'm going to be doing that next week. <laughs> All of them. It's my whole week. No, but yeah, let's... Um... Hey, if you want to marathon the Krampus films with me, <laughs> we'll just watch them at the same time. I avoided it because devils creep me out. <laughs> But he's now not, I might have to watch it. Not, yeah, I was going to say, he's not the devil. And he, he actually is not depicted um like as a devil in the Krampus movie. Like, they're going to look more goat-like. Yeah, he so, looks I mean, creepy. he does, he, he is very creepy. If toys bother you, do not yes. watch it. Because, like, he has, like, all of these elf servants, and all of the elves are wearing these creepy toy masks. And, like, there's like a jack in the box that like it grows until it's like this weird worm thing, and then its jaw like unhinges and it eats people like a snake. Nice. It's it's really fun. It's your mound. That's awesome. Creepy, creepy toys don't bother me because uh, American McGee's Alice had like a lot of twisted toys in it. I thought those were really cool. I like twisted toys, but it creeps me out. <laughs> Was that um all you had for us, Fire? Did you have more? No, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's Krampus. That's what I got for you. Krampus steals and eats children. He punishes, uh, he punishes those that are naughty and, uh, I mean, that's about all there is to Krampus. I bet Krampus would have eaten my Coley Koken. I'm sorry, Kevin McAllister. <laughs> so I'm that kid was a little shit. When I'm watching that as an adult, I'm like, he is a piece of shit. He deserves to be in the attic. <laughs> I wonder if... Like, Only in the first one. The second one, he didn't do anything wrong. I don't know if he it was wrong. Really. But I wonder if, like, Krampus came about... Because you said he was, like, a midwinter festival, which would be Yule. Um, and so, like, one of the main... Okay, well, let's say there's two... Uh, so, like, one of the main parts about Yule is that you only give gifts that are handmade. Like, you do not buy... It's not a consumer holiday like it is entirely about like the love and all of that so Aww, I wonder if Krampus was kind of their way of like I don't know keeping that and also like making sure that you because you know obviously Santa Claus as we know him today came from you know being good and Christian so before that they wouldn't have had like a real counterpart I mean like I know in Yule you would celebrate Odin which a lot of depictions of Santa Claus in some ways are based on depictions of Odin. So it's kind of like where like the whole like beard and all of that comes from. Anyways, it's a whole nother story. <laughs> well, 
Well, so but so the Odin uh, never brought you like gifts, so I just wonder if this was kind of their way of being like, you have to do these things and be kind of like good throughout the year, but also you need to pay tribute to Odin because that in pagan culture you would pray to your deity first, and then it was whoever the holiday was like represented by. So like in winter, it'd be like Odin would be the one that you would kind of pay homage to. Um, because he's like a winter god. He's not, Isn't but you know what I mean. Also right. Nordic Freya that's celebrated. I might be wrong. So there are a handful of gods. Uh, it depends on which pantheon you follow, but like in Norse, it would be Odin. It would be don't kill me for these names because I don't speak Icelandic. Um, Howder, H O D R, Howder, I think is how they say it. Um, he's the god of winter. Um, and then there's like a couple other ones. I don't think Freya's one. I think she's more. I might be wrong. She, she's she's also part of Friday. She's, I was going to say, she, is, as far yeah. as I remember her, has a lot to do with fertility. Yeah, and I think it's typically not winter. Yeah, I, think I have a friend that her religion is like the ancient Nordic mm -hmm. religion. And we last year with, at our holiday party, I wanted to make sure that she was included. So we got to do some fun little, and I felt like it was Yule, but I might be wrong on that. So in, this is going to get like way deep. It's, you can edit this. <laughs> so like in pagan in Wiccan, you have a patron god or goddess. So it could be that like, maybe that was her patron goddess. You can that have, sometimes you can have more than one or it's like a grouping, but typically you have one that's like your patron, kind of like in D&D, well, like it's a patron, you give one specific person. So again, the way that they do it is you pray on like each of the um, solstices to your god first, your patron. And then it would be the other ones within that if they are not. So like if Freya was yours, you would obviously pray to Freya during all of the holidays. But like in winter, it would be Odin. I don't know what the other ones would be because I don't know. I'm not that into it. <laughs> I just know like this. Uh, but so, it, I mean, it could just be that because that's how you, you want to pay respect to your God first. And then it's the other gods in your pantheon that are celebrated on that holiday. They call them Sabbaths on their on that Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, to oh. to answer the uh, the uh, original question or I guess statement, <laughs> um, before Christmas, Krampus had 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 nothing to do with like gift giving or anything. So it was specifically just that he would go through towns ringing the bell in order to disperse the winter spirit so that the the spirits of winter would not oh, so disrupt he was a good guy before christianity kind of yeah <laughs> so like he was still like uh like like spooky but but yeah like his his whole thing was that he would go through towns ringing the bell to keep to, yeah, to, to in, keep the winter spirits away in pagan culture they don't have like a good and an evil they have they have what they call dark and light which kind of like fairies it doesn't necessarily mean that they're good or evil they're very neutral um, right i was gonna say yeah. he like he's not like a bad guy or or a good yeah. guy necessarily he just was and he was he was the son of hell so hmm. interesting you know what i find interesting is that outside of christianity all the stories around Christmas time or winter solstice have creepy as fuck representatives. You've got Krampus, who even if he wasn't evil, was still depicted very creepily. And then like those other creepy, stories. Yeah. yeah, and then those other stories, like the ones that, that I shared last time, I can't really remember, like the one that goes and eats children and steals all the town's yogurt. Like, it's from multiple the, countries. Bel Belschnickel? That's not Belschnickel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Yule Lads. And then you got, like, the Yule Cat that eats people who don't get any clothes. Yeah. <laughs> like, wintertime. And, you know, it kind of makes sense because it's darker earlier. So you're indoors a lot. You're doing a lot of storytelling, bad things. There's no other entertainment. So, I don't know. Christmas time seems like a very scary time. <laughs> It was a really dark time, you know, like, other than it just being dark. Like, it's typically... Yeah, you fucking cool. freeze to death. Might freeze to death. <laughs> Might freeze to death. Food is sparse. Like, it's kind of a really... Back then, it was, like, a really intense... Yeah, but I never really thought about all the creepiness 
behind so, it. So in the Krampus movie, what? So I told you that the grandma's family was also like taken by Krampus. Um, what sparked that is that um, they were like distributing bread, and she was the last one to get a piece of bread, um, and then she was like mugged by adults for this so piece wait. of bread because her her village was starving. Wait, I have a question about this whole thing. Okay. If she has been in a snow globe since she was a child because she was visited by Krampus and taken? So she was not in a snow globe. Why not? She didn't speak up against Krampus. Correct. (laughs) So she she did. Um, So her story is that she... um, So that she got this piece of bread and then she was essentially like beaten up by adults. For, for this bread um, and like her family was arguing um, and there was a lot of like despair and so she like um, like finally stopped believing and was like I, I hate all of you and I hate Christmas and that summoned Krampus and Krampus killed the village and took her parents and, and all of that and he said uh, and she said that he, but he left me as a reminder of what would happen if belief stopped. And mm-hmm. so she had the one bell that Krampus left her and he left her alive because she didn't like speak up against Krampus. Yeah, Cause it sounded like he wasn't going to take that boy before. And then that little boy was like, no, Wait, so my family back he, was, was, like, gotcha. okay. he was going to leave the boy. And then the boy was like, no, fuck you. I want my family back <laughs> because he Krampus dropped a bell wrapped in newspaper for the boy and then like left him standing there and then the boy followed Krampus and was like no fuck you and okay. the Krampus was like all right bitch you going on a globe that makes okay that makes a little bit more sense yeah <laughs> so it was like a like a warning of like this is what happens when you stop believing uh thank you for joining us tonight um it was uh interesting <laughs> It was a very neat story. So it was like, a, I don't want to say tale. It's an interesting character. We'll go with that. Interesting character. Fucked up fables. Life lesson number four hundred and thirty-six. <laughs> Marathon. Watch the Krampus movies every all year. ten. And, and yeah. don't fight Krampus. Like yeah, don't don't fight, fight Krampus. Just let your family die. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you've already summoned ten. They're fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. What's, what's Krampus is there? Krampus don't he be a little him. shit in the first place and then he won't come. Yeah. Right. So uh, next week we're going to continue on with the um, party holiday theme. Um, it'll be my episode and I'm going to go a little bit north. I'm going to go up to the uh, Norse religion and cover a story from there which I want to know if you guys have figured out what my story actually is because i've not specifically said but i have given a lot of hints i don't remember any hints i I feel like you specifically didn't give us hints (laughs) it involves mistletoe it's the event that sets off ragnarok it's oh you did tell us that odin dies no (laughs) fenrir eats the moon no Oh, I don't even know if that's a thing. It just sounded like it would be a uh, like... virgin lights the black flame candle. No, Fenrir does not eat the moon, but he is involved in Ragnarok, which I'll kind of go over a little bit. I was going to say, I know, I know that he's involved in Ragnarok. <laughs> that's why I guess. Also, he's a cute little pup. Uh, so I will give you guys a break. I did ask previously if you guys knew anything about Norse mythology, and you guys were like, basically, I've seen the Thor movies, and I was like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, also seen Xena. Yeah, you've seen the Thor movies. We're just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Odin so, has an eye patch in Xena. I feel like that's for real. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so next week I'm going to be doing a Norse story. If you guys know what it is, I would be excited if you guys like commented that you know what it is. because. I'm going to feel a little uh, weird if no one else knows my story. 
Um, so you can follow us on YouTube. Your beautiful faces. It's fucked up fables. F asterisk C K E D up fables. And then we also have a Facebook group that you can join, which is the same F asterisk C K E D up fables. And then on Instagram, I post these awesome little uh, teasers and whatnot. And that is F'd up fables, E F F E D fables. And yeah, I guess we will um, see you guys next time. Bye.